Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Phil, John, and Chris again from Secret Spirits and other sh uh, We were originally planning to do a bit of a reaction video to the JGP interview. We were very excited. Um, but I don't know. I guess like not a whole lot was brought to the table from it per se, but I think it's still a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. And I think I kind of morphed it into a little more of piecing together stuff JJP has said in these various interviews. Like he's talked to what Josh Gates, uh, JM on the Christmas special and now to George. And uh, I feel like he's kind of reiterating some similar concepts that mm -hmm. maybe we should pay attention to. Right. I think so. I'm doing and, my uh, reaction. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I wanted to, yeah, George is going to be coming in for the second half. I think we're going to talk to him a bit about just like, you know, interviewing people like JJP, like what went into it, why, just some motivation. But yeah, let's, let's get into it. Um, so like, what's the, he keeps talking about these bookends. He keeps talking about New York. He keeps talking about San Fran. And this time he gave a whole long diatribe about the first painting and the last painting are both arches and they're both coastal paintings. Does that mean that these paintings go in chronological order from west to east or east to west? Or do I go west to east, then east to west and back and do some kind of flippy thing? What do you think, John? <laughs> <laughs> That was a heck of a statement. I, I liked it better when he left it at they're both arched paintings, they're bookends, yeah. and they're coastal. Because, I mean, just getting the coastal part was uh, kind of amazing for some people that are searching in, like, St. Louis, for example. Um, but um, I don't know. It, it super vague, right? You know, he, he seemed to start to talk about some sort of progression, um, if we can call it that, some sort of ordering, um, maybe, you know, difficulty, maybe the order they're painted in. Um, I don't know. I don't know what yeah. to take from a lot of this one, but um, you're right. He's, he's being thematic. He, he keeps going back to these things. So, so it's important to him for reasons. So I always ask myself, you know, is there something in the art that changes at some point, you know, in, in a progressive way? And, you know, we've, we've heard people theorize that over the years and, you know, many have laughed at them. Many have, um, you know, kind of morphed it slightly to, to make it fit their theories, but it's, it's difficult to tell what he's talking about. You know, um, I asked myself the question, can we somehow pair it to the months, the gems, you know, is there an order that could help us pair the verses? Mm -hmm. Hard to say. I think a thing you touched on there that's kind of, is, is like that he is, he's, he keeps bringing up these things that maybe aren't necessarily like a specific puzzle entity, but like, uh, what was the one we noticed uh, when they're talking about moons in San Francisco? And um, I can't remember, what was the exact quote was, uh, I can't remember, they are different phases. That's another thing. Oh yeah, yeah, and it, it, it's under his breath, right? And maybe he's not saying like, look at the moon phases, but he was clearly like aware of things like when he's drawing a moon, maybe he's not drawing a moon. Maybe he's drawing the face of the moon. Maybe, he's, you know, it's it's just like these, these subtle nods to things that he had on the mind when he was making this puzzle mm -hmm. that I think are more beneficial to us than if he was to say, you know, check out that eagle in, in image tw uh, 12 or whatever, you know, and we'd be like, so that's kind of like, I guess that's what I've been taking away more than being like, oh, that supports my theory. <laughs> but I think there's, we can start to kind of take the things that he said and see where there's overlap and see where there's a broader narrative that comes into it. Mm -hmm. He Defining those two as bookends tells us there's a start and a finish, mm -hmm. at least. Um, there has been the, 
the discussion over time of the progression of difficulty being related to the value of the gem. And let me tell you, Pearl's probably the least valuable gem in that list. And it happens to be the first of the bookends. That, that's the kind of stuff that gets my, uh, what was it? My noodle baked a little bit in, <laughs> in, in the sense that if in fact these bookends define a start and an end and the first one is presumably the easiest for the least valuable gem what the hell have we been doing with that painting in verse overthinking it to the max mm -hmm. and then i'm going to use that other one to support my own theory that new york is the fucking hardest and I don't know that uh, it's it was uh, BP's tour de force and you're going to have to solve every single one before that before you can even like on. really understand what's going on and there's like when you look at that verse 10 the similarities between the types of things that he uses in the other verses that all sort of culminate in verse 10 the the oars and you, you see uh we're, we've got another b just like in in verse 12 and uh, looking north taking steps it, right it, it kind of it's done feels all this like before it's, feels like it's bringing everything together so that would be a great end to the book and i think it's supported uh jjp loves to talk about sean connery's grail book from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. He's always, he's brought that up maybe in every interview. And uh, it seems like uh, BP had certain things he was looking for. What was the quote about Boston where he's like, you know, like the words on the walls, he loved that shit or something. I can't remember, but- Notorious. You know, Great point. Notorious for words on the walls. And yeah, so he has this book, he's noting things down. I mean, I notice things, you notice things, John notices things, we all notice different things. But you can kind of expect that one person is going to have, you know, they're going to, there's going to be trends in what he is noticing and what he's doing. And he did, he did support Chris's idea by saying he, he painted the painting with the woman that has the dragon on the uh, robe, right? First, and yep. he, he said he painted it first. So uh, that's interesting because he mentioned they were being solved in the order he painted them before. So, and he, what's the story? You know, he brought ease into that too, right? Like uh, he said, the order I painted it in, and they're also and being solved easiest to whatever. So yeah, San more Fran, or less. San yeah. Fran's ripe for the taking, it seems. <laughs> yeah. <I think>. Right. <laughs> we have to be missing something, right? It, it's it's just unusual that if that painting's so easy and these you know, work in a, a certain fashion, you know, it, it kind of begs the question, you know, does what he say, said on Gates's last show matter, you know, when he talks to uh, mechanical and optical and these various things? Are we just missing methods? You know, he, he said at one point that I believe there was a template but things could work differently, you know, within that template, you know, and I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. There's it's, not one way to solve these. There's yeah. a manner of things is pretty much how he started mm -hmm. that astronomical, whatever. Yeah. And then recently, but in this episode, he mentions template too. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a little odd. I mean, so if you, if you think about it, is there a, you know, a start, middle, finish type of template and they each require specific things that you must get out of these puzzles, right? A city, you know, maybe a street, something like that. You know, I'm just using random examples. Is Instead that the template? Dinner, yeah. yeah. And then he, he goes on to change up how he delivers those clues, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think you've, yeah, you've mentioned like, not just what you were saying, just doesn't just pertain to it's like, oh, he gives us Boston and Boston. He gives us uh, Quebec, possibly in five, but um, in the land by the by the window. You know, he gives us Manteo. But yeah, it's not just the verse. It's not just the image. 
you're thinking maybe this template is like Byron and JJP together. We have to cover these things. I'll get this, this, and that. You get Mm -hmm. this, this, and that onward. Like what? uh, Chicago had Congress called out in the verse. Charleston has a giant lion and a King Street in the image. So it's the same clue in a different way, I think. Yep. Milwaukee, it's on many streets. Yeah, agreed. So one thing I wanted to touch on, uh, just sort of going back to like, what what could we be missing? When he he showed that uh, the forest painting with the guy with the box and the, the conspiracy theories went all over the place. Um, maybe he wasn't being so literal. You know, when he's like, oh, did you think to count the trees or whatever? Like, maybe we're missing the forest for the trees maybe we're trying to be too literal and maybe counting stems isn't what we should be doing but thinking of these paintings in a bit more of an abstract way and trying to to find the theme you know these his paintings tend to be autobiographical um he said that, I think he said that about his like other paintings, but artists put themselves in into their work, no matter what their medium is. Um, so they're- It's just a musing of yours or do, or do you have like anything in mind? I don't know. It's just, I, I guess what my point is that we shouldn't take what he's saying so literally. I don't yeah. think he's speaking in riddles, but I think he's speaking very abstractly. And I think he's, He's doing a little bit of that Socratic method almost to say like, he's trying to to get us to see something without telling us. Sure, sure. And people are just taking his word and trying to go by the word. And like, yeah, he said, count the trees. So obviously that's important. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe there is something deeper that he's trying to get across. Kind of like the moon phases where it's not about the counting the trees it's about the trees at all yeah yeah I'd agree with that I think that's you know exactly what I was thinking when you were talking about the moons as well Phil is you know not only is his messaging maybe not so literal but the paintings themselves the things that remain may not be so literal so we're always you know we're always seeing people trying to find something specific you know, yeah. Boston really called out symbolism in the yeah. in the paintings, and I haven't seen many people take from that, and that could be uh, detrimental to our progress. So it's damn hard. Yeah. I'll say I'll say that right now. Like coming, it's not up easy. Boston clues. <laughs> yeah. So let's so talk did... about the Boston clues. Do yeah. you think? Do you think that? The um, Thucydides and Xenophon is really coming from that library? I don't know. It makes a lot of sense based on the Japanese clue because, you know, you have the Fenway mis- misdirection. And if the, you know, philosophers are also misdirection, who, you know, well, it Japanese was just clue that. Uh, one clue yeah, will yeah. give this whole thing away. You've the kind of taken thing. that to be more of a, because the puzzle is based on misdirection. It's not that like if you gave a, I don't know, Ironsides even was like, this is a famous boat. Like that, <laughs> even that would still be like, okay, how does that relate to Fenway? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, Boston... I don't know that we can learn a ton from Boston. It it feels like, oh, he he likes riddles. But that that misdirection felt deep to me, and it felt like you know his his trick, you know his his thing for Boston. So take it for what it's worth. I I just think it's it's gonna change up for the next one a little bit. So. Yeah, it and kind of makes me think about whether there's like a double nature to these clues. Like, is it both the Walpole quote and a reference to the library? Is there a tie between the library 
and the Walpole quote that we haven't put together? Or did maybe he the actually fact that the quote is in the library, you know, like maybe it's like pointing to pointing. Maybe, but but I think this actually kind of goes pretty well with another thing he mentioned that's kind of terrifying on some level is that if this was a modern puzzle, he says that there would be URLs hidden in things. Uh, He'd probably use QR full codes. Full cicada. They would lead to a website, which then leads back to the book. Now that process to me screams something interesting, kind of similar to what you're saying is you find this Walpole quote and then you come back to the verse and you go, okay, the area of his direction. It's not just you find the quote and you go, Herman, Herman Park. You find the quote, you go, okay, there's Thucydides, he's in Boston, he's north of Xenophon. Then you have to come back to the verse. Like there's, there is this web of madness that they did with what they had at the time, which was libraries, books, the, you know, the indexing methods. Maybe there is stuff like that. Like maybe there's like ISBN codes or something. I mean, that's that's going a little deep, maybe. No, but it'd be it'd be Dewey Decimal, man. It's the same. That's the same as putting a URL in there. If that's the kind of stuff he was into. Shit! If that number puzzle ends up being fucking Dewey Decimal just just send me off the cliff <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know it could be um the one thing he did mention when he he got into the uh the whole concept of making them slightly more difficult or much more difficult um he he stressed that it wasn't only him that needed to make them more difficult it was also byron with the verses and a lot of people, you know, call it out, you know, John doesn't know where these are. John doesn't know anything Byron did, but he knew that the verses aren't as complex as well. Yeah, How did he know so that? Bad. Yeah. I would have egged so, Byron on to make even more detailed verses. So does he more? realize they're not <laughs> detailed? Yeah. But yeah. I think and, he knows a little more than he puts on, right? And that whole, yeah. And that whole quote also just hammered home this resolution of one clue, taking people step by step, maybe solving one clue leads to another clue and like, it's interesting. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good point on your part though. Yeah, that it is reading between the lines. It's not necessarily what did Byron say? It's that like, mm, I, when he says you guys are on the right track, he, he does know you're on the right track, I think. I think he was talking about us. Specifically <laughs> us, yes, exactly. Specific, specifically us, the three of us, my dear. <laughs> Watch the um, video. <laughs> and like, yeah, you're in the general vicinity. <laughs> uh, Close to the lion. Um, so did you guys... I lost it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did you guys think that he was dropping clues indirectly so one thing that i noticed that he was doing is he was he was very much describing specific you know art he was describing things being painted in specific things or clues hidden a certain way in specific things so you know i i kind of think you know if i was john and i couldn't say this directly to you could i tell you things about how I might hide things in art. So he brings up Dolly's hallucinogenic Toreador. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anyone that knows Dolly in that painting knows it's anamorphosis. So it's perspective. You look at it, you, you tilt the angle and, you know, the face comes out of the Venus de Milo's. Um, he speaks about things being hidden and then talks to beer with bubbles. Now, maybe he's not talking about beer, maybe he's just talking about bubbles. You know, he talks about an artist that he, you know, was, I guess, indirectly competing with, you know, for, mm -hmm. for, for something or he had some relationship with that 
carve stuff out of trees. You know, and oh, yeah, if you, you if you think about, you know, one of the most, you know, compelling end games in San Francisco, at least for me, it's the goddess of the forest, which, you know, was carved from a redwood tree. It was with an ax, not a chainsaw. But, you know, could he be giving subtle hints those ways that take you to something, you know, maybe not quite as direct as people want him to. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And I think uh, in that same vein, a lot of what I find uh, unreliable about this specific narrator is he seems to forget a lot. But what if that's the same thing? Like Andy Summers, the guitarist from The Police. Is that like, oh, was it Andy Summers? No. No, it's obviously not Andy Summers that dug up the cask. You know, he knows who that is. Like there was even that segment where he's like, you're going to cut out all that band stuff, right? Like he was, yeah. he was in the bands, you know, he, so like, it's not, he didn't mess up Andy Abrams name. He just maybe dropped a hint or maybe he messed up his name. I don't know. <laughs> Chris. Yeah. I think it confirms my hypothesis that there's a lot of dicks in that San Francisco painting. <laughs> At least you or I. No, there's. You ever look? You've looked at that thing. There's a lot of. It's very phallic. That's a that's a Josh Cornell theory. So when I <laughs> I uh, met Josh Cornell in Montreal, you know we we kind of toured around and checked out a museum, and I just followed you know wherever he wanted to go because it was a lot of fun. But um, <clears throat> at a certain point it got a little too deep and, you know, it was raining and I was just like, okay, we gotta, we gotta get out of here. So we, we hit, hit a bar and, you know, grab some lunch and some beers and he had a laptop with him and he broke out the laptop at, at lunch. And he had, had a end to end theory that, you know, at some place in Golden Gate Park, I don't remember where it was, that there was a penis and it was a joke that Byron made and he's he was dead on like serious he's like he knew someone would be laughing about this you know like so uh in San Francisco who knows I think that's more supported than many theories currently in our current state that is more supported yeah it's a crazy world I mean what about the I guess the elephant in the room the images got confirmed. I mean, the, you know, the cities, at least, they were confirmed. I mean, yeah, I would say so. people, if you don't want that to be true, I understand. But the man is doing everything in his, you know, power to try and help you. Take the help. You know, I, I understand people getting upset. You know, I asked some questions and one guy just went off the rails. You know, I asked, you know, <laughs> he, he just literally went off the rails, you know, talking about um, we're doing everything wrong. Um, people have been doing it for 40 years. Like, OK, I understand you feel that way. But how how else could he have said that without saying, yes, they are all correct? Well, and it's indirect, like you said, uh, he confirmed the coordinates like there's no que- like he didn't go coordinates. He was just like, yeah, yeah, the coordinates. So like, even if he doesn't confirm the cities themselves, it's just, we have the coordinates. The coordinates are true. The coordinates are there. So that confirms the cities. There's only one city in most of those coordinates and the ones that aren't have a rebus spelling the city's name. So it's, kind of, or a picture of the city <laughs> in two yeah. of them. Yeah, it's hard to argue with Roanoke, right? Roanoke Island. And Charleston. I mean, that. that could that be an amazing puzzle? And you know, Roanoke Island is Roanoke, Virginia. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. But maybe if he made it today, I think that's what he was, you know, saying. You know, maybe if we made it today, that that um, map of Roanoke wouldn't be Roanoke Island. It may be Roanoke, Virginia the connecting and going this way, going that way. But there'd be some, you know, there'd be a confirmation of that. You'd have I'd to hope so. 
have to be pretty yeah. damn good. Yeah, confirmation is uh, something that I think we're all looking for and having real trouble finding. Yeah. Um, you want to go into just some like takeaways and then move on <clears throat> to uh, talking with George a bit? Yeah, um, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, I think everyone, like, I think people want some comment on the back of the book. He, he did say that the back of the book, he was, the whole SR-71 conversation was interesting, how everyone had their part, they did their part, they didn't really know anyone else's part. Pretty much all he said was, Byron insisted that this makes it to the book, maybe there's something there. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I necessarily, like, I, I'm a fan of the back of the book, I think there's clues there. But I don't know if he necessarily, if that should necessarily be taken as a wink, wink, as much as just a, this is what I know. Take with it what you will. Yeah, Chris had to get a bit excited there when he said the front of the book as opposed to the back, and then he he pivots to the back, and then the podcast kind of took him into, you know, columns and. Yeah. Um, I was really excited to hear about the front of the book. Yeah. Um, not sure what not so much what the, the back. The book you know? is. <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's the thing. Is that one of these like sly hints? He called it the front of the book, meaning you'd need to read it from the end to the beginning, oh. from right to left. Oh, no. You try <laughs> <laughs> I just prefer not to think about that. That guy that was yelling was like, see, I told you. I told you you've been doing it wrong. Like, this guy gets me. Yep. <laughs> we have something for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the word plays that everyone's talking about, but it's like every third word, the two words combined. I don't. Ooh. That's awesome if he did it. I mean, yeah, honestly, awesome, yeah. if he did that, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I missed you guys' first episode and I wish I had it up, but that honey sweet swarm end poem to the uh, to the litany sent section just oh, yeah. troubles me. It pains well, me to look at it. And we will pop so, into that deeply maybe next week or the week after, depending on how we feel. <laughs> I might um, I might have to try uh, running some <laughs> cipher stuff against that. Yeah, I think I think it's worthwhile. Maybe, you know, maybe you want to think that it's like every third word for the whole thing, but maybe he's talking about a very specific, very specific section. If if he knows anything at all other than just like how could he do a word play? Uh every third word. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, that was just interesting that he mentioned the rest of the book. So I think that's cool. Um, a little proud for people who completely dismiss it that maybe these articles that say you just need the paintings and the verses. Even JJP is not sure about that. And um, I don't think that means you don't, you know, you're not able to solve them yes, with exactly. just you know the verse and and the image. So that's Neither where everyone. Not. Two different yeah things. they people like butt heads and to me it's it's probably uh supplementary material yep um so yeah he said we've discerned the general location high res is better that was interesting i've been very anti i've been broad strokes i hate the image don't show me the image don't show me your image match but when he starts talking about shadows and irises not coming through, oh God, yeah. I'm like, oh, God, no. <laughs> Tear ducts, yeah. that was the word. Yeah. Tear ducts, yeah. Reflection. There's a Tear lot of weird stuff. And, uh, moon, moon drops or something? What is that? Tear drops and moonlight? <laughs> yeah, moonlight and teardrops. <laughs> well, we can't see the moonlight, so we can't get that clue. <laughs> exactly. But, but that could be explained as well. Like if you look in, you know, the, the chest area of the, the Roanoke painting, there is a clover mm -hmm. and it's, it's difficult to see when you look at it in the book, but in a high res photo, it's much easier to see. So right. I think you have to take that with a grain of salt. I wouldn't go crazy and start, um, 
going down to the pixel level. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. There's, I think he did confirm one um, common misconception that, you know, everything came through in the book. People, people, um, I feel like mi they mis misconstrue that statement. You know, everything perhaps that was needed came through, but there may be other things that could have helped our case or our cause, right? That yeah. didn't come through. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the fence. The fence in the front of the book, you mean? Yeah, the title page. It's like, <laughs> yeah. with that opal, someone called that an opal today. And I'm like, well, that is interesting. White stone closest, huh? Yeah. Um, and then the only other thing, like, I don't, I don't know what to look forward to anymore. JJP spoke. It wasn't as exciting as I hoped, but he did say, I'm still looking for preliminary drawings of this stuff. That could be fun if any of that stuff came out. Um, that could be what a lot of people are asking, like, oh, can he redo the paintings? No, he's not going to redo the paintings, I don't think. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't re-record his song. Uh, I, it's just not going to happen, uh, but the preliminary drawings can be very, it's fun to see the progression. Like I know a couple of them maybe were floating around and you can see like, oh, that clue wasn't there or like the hat changed, you know, stuff like that. Like, Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to see the sketches. I mean, I'd love to own one of the sketches. I'm not, I guess I'm not the, the hugest Palancar, you know, art guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I like it. I think it's fantastic work, but it's not something I'd personally want hanging a lot of it, but some of it's very uh, sentimental to me at this point. So it doesn't uh, go with your couch. It does not go with my couch, but um, <laughs> a sketch would be fantastic. You know, if yeah, anyone yeah, comes yeah. across a sketch that they want to toss on eBay and get me to blow some money on, I'm down. Cool. Well, shall we uh, move on to the second portion of our chat here where we have a drink and invite George in? Yeah, give me one second. Let me just get him the link and hopefully we can get him in. So what are you guys drinking? Phil, you just look like you, you finished your drink. You should probably re up before we we do this uh, segment. Switching back to the old the old dick <coughs> phallic, oh, phallic things in my uh, San Fran <laughs> images. <laughs> uh, I've got uh, a little bit of yellow chartreuse here. Ooh, your favorite. No green for Chris. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't be able to drink the green into a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that would be uh challenging yeah it's like 55 percent. i'd be i'd be done already 55 percent. wait what no wait no that's I'll, not I'll never mind volume. never mind that's not that high it's only good. 110 proof yeah that is high i didn't realize that that green chartreuse was that potent yeah i have these, some downstairs it's always the in yellow. a smaller bottle too right yeah, you can get the big bottles in the U.S. That's why, but whenever I can get down there, we'll bring bottles home. But it's like it's like wine. You can buy like I went to this restaurant in San Francisco, and they the bartender there loved chartreuse, and he had gone all over France and found these bottles in like caves and you know all the, all the like, crazy. crazy france shit and it was like you could get the 1991 you go all the way back to like 1947 and the the green from 1991 even like 20 something years it was so pale Are any and, of like them it, the it same, lost though? all its color they're all the same it's the same recipe there's only Is like it? but i thought two... it was like one monk that makes like made yeah. them all and like it, it was they're all like kind of chartreuse but and everyone just starts doing and doing it in their basement, right? Like this is like old, old stuff, it's, you know. It's a it's secret like the recipe. Thing. Yeah, only two monks that have sworn a vow of silence can know the recipe at any time. 
Is that true? They, wow. Yeah. And they live in like the, the I'm unsure if anyone noble. can hear me because I can't hear any of you. George, we can, hear, we can you. hear you. Well, while George is figuring his shit out, what are you up to, John? What do you got in that class? Yeah, so I am doing the McAllen Fine Oak 18 year. And I had a bit of a mishap. So I, I collect whiskey and I have for quite some time. And I had two glasses left in this bottle. And if you, you see in the bottom of the bottle, <laughs> I uncorked this bottle this evening and the cork broke. And it was to the point where I was like, ah, I'll try and pry it out. But um, as soon as I touched it, it went down to about here. So I just had to push it down and um, I poured my last glass of uh, McAllen 18 with, you know, something slowly running out of my tear duct and uh, had to give Heidi the remainder. So Heidi got an excellent glass of whiskey and uh, I will probably not never buy another bottle of this. So nice it's a sad day. It's a good drink though. 18 is a good year. It's a good, it's worth buying another bottle. Can George hear us yet? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Oh, good. Can you guys hear me? Awesome, man. Yeah. Good, so you it's heard great John's have you, great man. story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are you drinking just, tonight or are you, uh, so, are you so I, uh, straight I, I just, No, no, no. I decided to do something super special. So a long time ago, it was probably like two years ago now, right? Kim and Nadine gave a yes. bunch of us a bottle of this high gold just and I've never opened it. The plan was always to like wait <laughs> until you found a, a cask or whatever. I never opened it, so I'm opening it tonight. Perfect. Very yeah. specific cask too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there we go. Maybe in Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you guys? What are you guys up to? What are we talking about today? I'm guessing. So we we jumped into the to the episode you guys put on you know excellent job i think we we discussed it um face value for me i was like man i'm i'm not like i'm not into it like i i listened to it i didn't hear what i wanted to hear yeah and then i started to think a little bit you know yeah. and the the wheels started turning we started discussing and you know maybe there's some things we miss maybe there's there's some things we overlooked and it wasn't quite as straightforward. So yeah, there were a few know, little there were a few little nugs in there, I think, that everybody just sort of skipped right over some like really important stuff that I, I figured you guys would, would catch on to pretty quick. Yeah, I don't know that we did. Um, <laughs> I take thematic it'll, input. <laughs> it'll be interesting. We probably should have had you on from the start while while we discussed it all, but um it'll it'll be a fun listen for you to see the first half of this. Yeah. So you can chuckle out at us and how we uh started to break down some of the things that john shared yeah but um well you guys don't focus on the image as much yet right you're you're mainly just verse guys and john he really can't share much about verses he doesn't know shit about the verse can we cuss i don't even know if we can cuss oh yeah, yeah uh, you can know. all right cool. we're pro we're pro cussing <laughs> okay good but yeah so like i mean and all of his like i feel like the stuff that he talked about like he tried to do it kind of cryptically, like he's not just going to come out and tell you stuff. So I think the most important things that were in that interview, they weren't just like right out in your face. Like the, the, one of the most important things that I thought he said was when he was talking about the images um, or when I, what was the question I asked him? Um, if we could name them, if we could name the images where he was like, whatever legend or want to attribute to the, the the images up to you which tells me there's a there's a legend there's there's something that ties all of these images together right it's not straightforward look for this thing that looks like a fence post or whatever you think he misunderstood the question in any way to name the paintings yeah i don't know i don't know that he would i mean it was a pretty straightforward yeah. question right do the paintings have names but we know they do yeah. don't we <laughs> yeah like a couple of them at least like yeah we so. know a couple yeah but i feel like the names that we know tie into the the solutions that we know as well sure sure the thematic right 
Yeah, yeah. Aside from Castle Hat, Castle Hat means nothing. But medieval yeah. scarecrow ties into the Roanoke verse. I mean, it talks about the man would ride the man of, from Oz. Oh, interesting. You see what I'm saying? That's good. So, I mean, the, like the medieval part, scarecrow like, where was the where was the like epicenter of the medieval world was the UK. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I, I mean I. I don't think he's going to paint anything that doesn't have a name, but I think holding that back and then saying whatever legend you want to attribute to it was a really, really big hint. Yeah, it was super strange. It was almost like he was cloudy about it for me. Um, you know, he, uh, he, he started to answer it and it, it felt like he went down a, a path where he didn't want to hurt anyone, anyone's feelings. You know, it was, it's, you know, whatever you want it to be. Maybe he was telling that story. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But um, kind of cool. I, I'd not well, thought about it. That I think like he, he is, I, I mean, I guess he is uh, worried about hurting people's feelings. He has like, because of this thing, I've sent him a lot of crap from the Facebook pages, you know? And a lot of it's mm -hmm. just, uh, most of the questions that were posted, it was, it was odd. When I asked people for questions for, for John, I figured it'd be stuff like kind of general but it was mainly like, here's my idea. Is it right? So a lot of the stuff that I sent him to answer was that. And I, I, maybe he didn't want to hurt people's feelings. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, the man has a soul then still. Kind of, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I missed but, the cutoff on my, my question. Well, on the Palancar question, were you going to yeah. ask one? Yeah, what I was, was going question, to. And Chris? it's like, the, the comments have been locked like, minutes before my question is about typos in the book i wanted to know like if byron was like as meticulous as he sounds and would he have let typos get through the book or not because there are a lot of typos in that book and yeah. i look at them and they make me question am i supposed to be noticing that and does that mean something or was this book being rushed and they just got it to press and did, you know, triple check. Well, I mean, mentioned he wished he had more time, right? Well, yeah, but knowing the time frame that they like paintings take a while, but knowing the time frame that they did um, the entire book, it seems like they had plenty of time, right? Because John said something like he was still in school when they started doing the paintings. They didn't finish the paintings, or I, I don't know when they finished the paintings, but they didn't do the book until what, November of 1982. They had a couple of years. So and you can look in Dragon World too, and, and you, you'll see that like, like I think I pointed out once gray in Dragon World, he's, he's using the word gray to describe some wings. And he's using gray to describe the exact same wings in two different places, and he uses gray with an E once and gray with an A once. So like, who really knows? Is, is he just, is, is that an editor's error? Is it his error? Is it something he doesn't catch? Does he not care? But I think like typos in the book is a good question especially in a book like this. Yeah, exactly. Like the, I've been looking at the Germany, just in general, German Im immigration lately. And sometimes dwarfs is spelled with an F and an S. And sometimes it's dwarves with a V-E-S. Yeah. Sometimes uh, the Hutchin has an umlaut. And sometimes it has just the straight line over top of the U. Ah, uh, the Hutchin, yeah. of course. <laughs> right. And then the, uh, the, the Wilden Fraulein, are described as handsome, but Fraulein means young lady. It should be wild and Junker to be a handsome young man, a wild, handsome young man. So like, are these things that I should be paying attention to? Or is this like, yeah, we kind of just like dialed it in and like, it sounds German. So just like send it to print. Nerd. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would totally like, and this is why I like this podcast because this is stuff I've never even thought of. It's never stuff I've never even done. Yeah. I'm um, in awe as well. Yeah, I would totally pay attention to that, especially knowing like with with John saying that there's some sort of code, you'd have to find the pattern for that code. And then there's got to be some kind of pattern somewhere that points you to the code, right? Typos is a really, really easy pattern. Never know what to do with typos, though. I see typo well, codes, and I'm like, do I use the word? Do I use the typo again. letter? We're back in Fandango land. We can. You, why'd you do this, George? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I can't go back to Fandango land. Really, really, all you got to do is take the secret and fold a couple of pages over, and then go to Rhode Island, and you get a cask. Poke around in the dirt a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs>
that was sort of irritating. Are you guys going to talk about Fandango at some point? Because that was like we need like time. <laughs> all all the stuff that I saw, I didn't get into Fandango. I, I didn't even like really read the book. I think I asked John for a copy of it right after it was it was finished, or maybe like a week before. But all the stuff that I saw was brilliant. The stuff people were coming up, brilliant. And then it was brilliant, like just fold yeah. a page, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, it kind of makes a straight line. That's a one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's. I still, uh, I, I still harbor resentment. Maybe one day, when we've worked through it, <laughs> exercised the demons, we can come back and talk about it. But like, I made a lot of really cool puzzles in that book. Yeah, yeah, Chris, Chris didn't came up exist. with some great puzzles. He invented them. <laughs> yeah, and they they fit. They aligned. It it could have been masquerade. It was toes and ears and all sorts of shit. And, no. <laughs> I mean, we can make a puzzle as brilliant as we want, but sometimes it's just ooh, pull the page. Yeah, yeah. But that I see that a lot in the groups now. There's like, there's the way the puzzle is, and there's the way we want the puzzle to be. And sometimes separating that is is tough. Yeah. Well, let's ask George this. So it, it's come up. You know, it's probably the only thing that's really been talk talked about deep since the episode the cities everyone wants to argue about the cities you uh, felt it was obvious right i mean yeah, it, yeah. as I, obvious as he'd make it because yeah. he he backs out right i mean if he doesn't want to answer something at least in some of the past stuff i've seen not only that it, it, it's done yeah you know? not, not only that but in this so this conversation with john was really really long um we probably did so the it was like an hour and 16 minutes or whatever, but we recorded for like two and a half hours. It was a long ass conversation. Now, most of it didn't have anything to do with the secret. It was like, he's like you said, he's kind of a techno or a tech whore. He, he talked a lot about music, like ambient and drone music. And he didn't want oh, any nice. of that in. Yeah. Uh, he, he is a, he is a music fan. We listen um, to the sun. We'll have a good time. But but one of like one of the things like he said was and, and I, I offered this to him and really anybody that comes on the podcast I offer like I'll give you a final edit and you approve it and if you want anything cut we'll cut it out. So I gave him an a, a edit that was like two hours long he wanted a bunch of shit cut. We cut that he went back and watched it again wanted a bunch of other stuff cut we cut that and boom there it is he never once mentioned cutting the cities like he just didn't. Mm -hmm. So but I mean a great for, point. Proven that the people flipping people off either. He, he's fine with that in there as well. <laughs> but but proving proving the cities to people like really at this point there was only what there was four that we didn't know for sure. I mean we had a pretty good idea because the latitude longitude coordinates, but we didn't know Montreal. We didn't know or I'm, I'm sorry. Um, no, yeah, you know, we didn't know um, New Orleans. We didn't know Charleston. We didn't know Roanoke, and we didn't know Saint Augustine. He named Saint Augustine by name. Like, I didn't prompt him for that. He just did it. I know there was a weird cut, but there was no prompt. So you're left, sure. with, Ro you're left with Roanoke, Charleston, and New Orleans. Roanoke and Charleston got big maps or big yep. outlines of the cities in them. So they're pretty obvious. The only one you got left is New Orleans. So it's got the latitude and longitude court. Like, what? what and Louis it's hard Armstrong to argue. Yeah. <laughs> but, if, but if those facts together don't change people's mind, JJP saying the cities are correct aren't you? That's not going to change your mind either. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. I was mean, was it in order, isn't... George? Or sorry, huh? Was it in order what the edit you ended up with, or did you kind of move it around to work? No, it was, it was pretty much in order. I don't think I actually moved anything. It was just spliced. Should we visit the hand tat then, John? I was going to say there's one thing that we haven't <laughs> talked about yet. <laughs> okay, so I I don't know if you want me to ruin the mystery and just tell you what that is. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Because it, it, you know Can what? We guess? It's going to. <laughs> yeah. Guess. Total. Totally guess. Totally guess. So my guess earlier was it's one of the clock hands. Like it's that same style from the New Orleans or the the really good like painted San Francisco one. Yeah. I'll let you and go, Phil. I think. Yeah. I I agree. I didn't have any ideas. I'm the dude who doesn't look at images and missed it. But um. You know the guys guys noticed it and when i watched it back he literally says um i don't forgot the context but he says the timing on that stuff as he does his overt left hand yeah. face rub with what these guys already thought was possibly a clock hand i thought that was an interesting phrase to say well 
doing that. And then later in the video, it's gone. He wipes it off. Yeah. So, so I'll tell you what I think it is. I think he was absolutely messing with us and he <laughs> had drawn the layout of his studio on his hand because he mentions that he's rearranging his studio. And then he's yeah. like, holy shit, I have this on my hand. Watch me screw with these guys. Oh, dude, John's been, <laughs> That's my opinion. John's been rearranging his studio for like 10 years now. So the real answer is, um, and this is just, so John didn't explain this to me. This is just stuff I sort of know. So maybe not real answer, but here's my opinion. Um, John used to say that he hated getting mail because back before he had any sort of internet presence where it was like, where he had somebody to tell people, don't, don't send them shit, right? Back sort of in the queue for T days, he used to get a bunch of packages from people and he would always politely reply to them and say, I don't know anything about where the treasures are. And he would include a couple of signed prints or whatever, just like, thank you for reaching out, but I can't help you. And on the back of every envelope, he would draw a bunch of weird symbols just to fuck with whoever sent him the <laughs> All right. My, my, that's what my opinion is. Like, he, he, you that's bothered amazing, him, he's yeah. gonna screw with your mind. Yeah. And we bothered him with a with a with an interview, so he was, you know. <laughs> so it might be a clock hand, is what you're saying. It might be. <laughs> might be. <laughs> it does look like the San Fran one. I implore you to check it out. All all of the people that didn't notice that, when they see this and they hear what George said said they're going to actually think that's an overhead view of a cast location yeah. drawn, you know, off of some 1977 map that uh, Helen Carr found the yeah. night before. So uh, I mean, I, I guarantee you that theory is coming up. I don't want to put words in the man's mouth because he didn't, I didn't ask and he didn't tell me, but I know the story from before. So that's probably what it is. That's a cool story too. That's mm -hmm. funny. Yeah, that is no, good. It's a, it's a good little piece. So you said you said uh, the interview was long. Do you do you feel like um, he's starting to warm up to the whole idea of the secret and you know just seeing what it means to some of these people and you know I I almost got the impression that it was so old at first and you know he had trouble remembering and it wasn't some of the work that he was probably proudest yeah. of. So the, the publicity may not have been the right publicity for him, but it, so, to me, it, it kind of feels like he's starting to get into it a little bit. Well, I think it's two things. I think it's two things. Um, I don't remember if this made the interview or not, but he's um, a decent amount of time during in the interview. When, when we were talking about the museum, we were talking about his paintings that were in the museum and he was talking about different illustrators that are also in the museum, sort of people yep. that he appreciates and he's fans of. He was talking about how he, how, how basically everybody has this um, this idea in their head for where like their path is going to take them for where their life's going to take them where their profession's going to go that kind of thing and he felt for the longest time that he wasn't able to reach where he wanted to go and his earlier work was holding him back from that so he wanted to kind of avoid his earlier work but now he started to realize that you you can never get like you always envision perfection for yourself you always envision that perfect path and he it's something that's unattainable so you have to embrace what you have um i think also that there there's been a lot of like the publicity has shown that people love this puzzle for more than just the prize like it it does do special things for people and i think he's embracing that as well so i think that's sort of why he's opening up a little bit my opinion that makes sense yeah yeah definitely any other questions from you guys i can keep going i can go no, all night on this one. dude you had like a, a hundred like a shitload of messages on those two facebook you know, pages except for on the one it was like people couldn't read it was like what do you want to ask john <laughs> i mean maybe they don't care maybe they don't care that you know it's you george that that could be it they're just like this guy you know, he pulled out of the hunt. He doesn't know anything. Why do we need to ask him anything? I think so, the one, and you you can talk to that if you want, or well, we can I, save that to the end. It's, it's, it's really up to, up to it, you. It's your show, bro. 
Yeah, maybe maybe we'll save that because I think that's, you know, an important thing to end on and just understand. And, you know, I want to make everyone feel good about it. You know, I think I think the best one that I saw out of all of these was. Cole May asked, what can you tell us? What can I tell you about what I know? Um, It's an important question. Um, Basically. At this point, everything that I know to be true. Um, And I don't, I don't feel like, and and I guess, okay, let me go back. Let me just change this for you. Okay. Let me address your first question first, because it's easier to explain this with that. Um, So do you want me to ask it or? It's up to you. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's obvious, right. And I don't know that everyone caught this, um, on the interview because it didn't come up as much as I thought it would, you know, George basically said that, you know, because of, you know, the relationship that he has with John, you know, that's at least how I interpreted it. Um, You're not going to be able to hunt for a cask anymore. You may be able to do some help. You may be able to, it sounds like, you know, finish up, you know, tie up some loose ends that you have, but, yeah, tell us a little bit about that, and then maybe we can get into the other stuff. So, John and I talk a, a decent amount. We don't we don't talk a, a whole lot, but we talk a decent amount, and we've developed a friendship enough that where like one of the main reasons that that Rachel and I decided to go ahead and get married was that one day John called Rachel and told her just to marry me. Like it, it's That's that kind funny. of yeah, it's that kind of relationship. We don't we try our our damnedest, at least I do, to not really talk about the secret. But we've like I guess developed a sort of friendship, and I value that friendship. And John was worried that if I ever go dig a hole in the ground and pull out a cask, it's just going to sort of put a dark cloud over this hunt. Like John gave me hints, and I went and pulled out a cask. Um, so what we decided was that while I can still work on it, I can still help people. I don't. I can, I cannot claim a prize, right? I cannot walk away with something. So if you and I are working on a puzzle and say we find Montreal and you dig up a cask, that cask is yours. I I get nothing from that. I don't want any credit. I don't want the physical thing. I don't want a gem. I don't want any publicity. I don't want any of it. Um, Which makes me sort of more of a resource. And it frees up like before I had a hard time talking about ideas that I personally had with this puzzle. Like I know people have made the comment on the Facebook page, like George doesn't ever talk about what he thinks. He just talks about what other people think, you know? And that's because I want to dig up a cask, right? So all of my ideas are in my head and I'm going to keep them secret just like everybody else. But this frees me from that. Like now I can talk about my ideas. Now I can talk about how I see these images differently a little bit than other people. And it frees me from that. So sir, Cole's question, what can I tell you? Basically everything I know that's true, which is not a lot, right? Um, my, my, my problem knowing people that are sort of on the, the back end of this is, is you, you get a lot of stories, right? You get a lot of sort of crosstalk back and forth. And it's never like somebody sending you an email going, this cask is in X place. It's just little snippets of information, right? And sure. this, this thing's been going on for 40 years. So it's almost like those stories end up like a 40 year game of telephone. They're never, they're never correct. Like I'll give you an example and I'm going to keep it super vague. John, you know, the story, I hope you will also keep it super vague. All right. If it's what I'm thinking of, I'll never speak of it. Okay. So I got this, I was CC'd in on some emails once where um, Byron where a guy, one of, one of Byron's friends was like, yeah, I helped him. He, like he flew into town. I'm not going to say the town, I'm not going to say the friend. He flew into town and he wanted me to meet him at the airport. I picked him up. We drove around town and we went to this very specific place to bury a cask. And it's a place where literally when John and I talked about it, I said, if this story is true, I'm done with this hunt. Like it, it's, it's worse than a ball field. It's worse than anything. So I needed to get to the bottom of it. So I started shooting out some emails like, Hey, I got this. Is this true? Could there be any truth to this whatsoever? And it's the only time I've ever gotten a hard no from everyone I asked. Like, no, this is absolutely not true. Byron would not do this. Um, And that's, that's what I mean by true. If I had just taken this information 
and just threw it out, it would have destroyed everything, right? Just because I heard some rumor. But verifying it and making sure it's true is the important part, right? So I've got a lot of crap in my head, but I don't know that half of it's true, right? So I'm not just going to throw that out there. Most of it, like if I don't know if it's true, I don't consider it. I don't want anybody else to. So what can I tell you? What I know that's true. Um, if I may interject on your ideas, as you mentioned. Yeah. I only know about this because someone actually just asked me about it. But um, on Facebook, you alluded to there's something in all of the paintings that hasn't been figured out yet. Yeah. You have an idea. I don't know. It's just your theory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but I you're think... trying to figure out is this is, is speak speaking is the best way to. Yeah. So I think uh, I think back what we were saying before, the the sort of the legends or the stories that are based on the paintings. I think that's what we haven't figured out yet. So okay, like take yeah. take the New Orleans, take the New Orleans painting. We've went so long trying to figure out, you know, what the what the mask is, right? Is, is it Louis Armstrong? Is it not? Is where are the where where are the, the flowers in the painting, the city park flowers? Uh, do the do the columns on the on Gallier Hall match the you know the side of the the grandfather clock? When what we, we should really be looking at is what it, what do these things represent? And if you look at the New Orleans painting as a whole, you can see like a lot of nursery rhymes. You can see like the cow running away with the spoon kind of thing. You can see good night. Moon. I didn't come up with any of this, so don't give me credit for it. Like good night moon. You could see uh, the clock striking um, midnight for Cinderella. You could see uh, a, a wolf hand in grandma's, you know, grandma's pajamas holding up the mat. You see a lot of uh, like allusions to nursery rhymes, right? Which as we all know in city park is storyland uh, an entire park based on nursery rhymes um you see stuff like uh oh what was the other that i was gonna say um well like saint augustine right we've always saint augustine's got nothing really for image matches right you've got you've got the uh you've got like a little alligator in the in the mountain you've got um the castillo and you've got a rock right um and people are always like where's that rock where's that rock and people never ask like what is a rock what is a rock in the middle of water like it, it's an island right like I, I th it's even hard medieval to scarecrow like you said like it's not the it's not what's on his armor what's he doing it's he's a scarecrow yeah and he's medieval that tells you two things right there yeah. wizard of oz and as chris said england uk so exactly kind of so it, it, I, I want to try to, especially now that I, I'm, I don't have the burden of, I want to find one of these two. I want to try to make people look at it. Just, just try to see these things a little differently. You know what I'm saying? Just stop. I know people always make fun of me for my keep it simple, stupid, whatever stuff. Um, and I think people misinterpret that as like, it's got to be, you know, it, it's because there's this word on this painting, there's gotta be this word right on your dig spit and everything's gotta match perfectly. And it's, it, it, keep it simple is not that, it's just a one-to-one. -one. Like, like John's granite walls is a perfect example of simple. It's a granite cornerstone with the word walls on it. Like how you, you don't get any more simple than that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just, that's my thing. I just wanna make people look at it a little differently, maybe m more complex than people think that I want them to maybe not yeah I mean it's different it, it can still be clever and simple right the granite yeah. walls is extremely clever because how many years were we looking for granite buildings and things like that yeah. um it but, isn't too far from that but it, like it's man very notorious different. for looking at words on walls <laughs> yeah. yeah or like what's a creative way of saying windy city right it's a, a big ass windmill you know yeah, that alludes absolutely. to windy city or take take like san francisco for instance you've got golden gate park in the middle of this right you've got a dragon in the middle of golden gate park and we know this is the china the the, the china puzzle right what's the easiest way to tell people go to san francisco like in golden gate park what's the easiest way to say dragon's gate put a dragon in golden gate dragon's gate chinatown san francisco like I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying it's brilliant. Yeah. I'm saying it's creative. It's a, it's just a different way of looking at it. And possible. Yeah, that's true. I mean, 
I'm trying to push people to read the litany more because if you if you look at that New Orleans painting and think about the fairies that got called out New Orleans, yeah. the Lucaru werewolf, the da, uh, Dame Blanche white woman, Snow White, yeah, you know yeah. I don't I don't think that stuff's like super opaque. I think we've just not not been paying attention. Yeah, to the right nobody's things. been looking at it. No, everybody's been focused on the image in the verse. No one's looking at it. So let me turn this around. What do you, what do you think about what he said about the back? Well, he called it the front, so <laughs> he did. <laughs> but like he, that. he also did the uh, the scientific names, and you know he. Yeah. So, yeah, I know. I think it was pretty clear he was talking about the back. Absolutely, yeah. But we just mean as as far as like. The unreliable narrator JJP <laughs> makes him out to be. He he, yeah. went, he, he went and did it or, again. Yeah. Or he <laughs> reads. Uh, I said this once already, but he, maybe he reads books backwards from <laughs> into beginning. And what does that tell us? He just really likes manga. That's what it is. What's the glyph quote? Any damn way, but left to right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think we we talked about this a little earlier, but I think. Uh, it is what it is, you know, it's it's that quote that's been misconstrued for over a year now that people find in the articles where it says all you need is the image in the verse. And that can still be true while there's other, you know, supplemental materials in the rest of the book. Like, you know, yeah. you, you don't need them, but but they're there. White white woman and uh, <laughs> and werewolf from Chris over here. Uh, well, I mean, that's yeah, that's straight up in the litany, man. Or like supporting, the, the passage supporting material. The but yeah, yeah. I, and I think, like like I always harp, uh, even if the back of the book was prefab, the pictures and the captions that accompany the pictures, pictures were not prefab. Yeah. So we have two things already. And then John loves this chart in the back of the book that's there for no reason other than to sync up these fair people to places they came from and places they went. I mean, is that not what the book is? It drives me mad. There is zero reason for that chart to wind up at the very end of the book. Yeah. Other than to show you where they possibly could have gone. And I haven't figured it out, but I just feel like, you know, when I look at the back of the book, there is some obvious there, you know, you, you look at someone like Buckminster Fuller being re referenced and, you know, a giant buckyball is out at the Expo 67 site. That's, you know, one of the most famous Buckminster Fuller works there is, you know? So are there hints? Are there clues? Does it mean that you're going to be able to solve the entire puzzle by, you know, going super deep in the back of the book? I doubt that. But if that's true, good on the people that have been doing it but i think there needs to be a a healthy balance of what you're trying to accomplish you know and you know going real real deep and making one connection to another connection through you know a fairy yeah. um woven path just doesn't feel like it's right to me but are there things there absolutely you know is there more than we're finding it, it certainly seems there may be. So, you know, what do we need to look at? How should we start to approach it? Tough questions. Yeah. That web, Chris mentioned in our first episode yeah. that it's a web as opposed to a path. And I think that, is, you know, image and verse are here, but there's all sorts of tangential stuff that can feed into it. I think something else that, that John said um, sort of helps with this the fluidity of how they made the puzzle um, sort of gives a little evidence to there being at least some sort of cryptic hints in the text of the book. Like he, he made it pretty clear that they didn't really have a hardcore plan. He was like, you know, he said, I sent stuff to him and he was like, Oh yeah, include this and don't include this. And they made this on the fly. So if he made this on the fly with, with um, John, it's likely something on the fly with Alex J or he made something on the fly in the front of the book. Like there's going to be, I think there's going to be, there's a lot of little stuff that he just sort of one day at 3am thought would be cool and threw in there 
you know, that we're just either we're not going to find or, you know, we're, we're not going to know what to look for. Yeah. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. All is fair in the secret, right? I mean, yes. no matter what we say, um, people are going to do their own thing. And, you know, you hope they take guidance from the creators. You hope they try and, you know, open their minds to, you know, what these people are doing by taking the time to actually interact and speak with us. Um, you know, I, I almost find it slightly disrespectful to just, just slam the guy, you know, when it, it feels like he's trying to help. So, you know, from me and, you know, from these guys, we appreciate what you're doing. Um, you know, I hope that he's going to continue to, uh, you know, consider the community a place where, you know, he wants to interact and he wants to, uh, you know, put some content out too, because, you know, while it, it did take me as, you know, the most interesting thing in the world at first, as I started to think about it, you know, it, it got very interesting and I think it was much more valuable. So, you know, I appreciate it, man. We, we really appreciate you doing it. It was my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Man. But I think that's all I have for now. I mean, do you guys want to ask any like last parting questions, throw George off, off guard and try and get him to cave on uh, yeah. the secret spirits and others? Or should we just <laughs> ask him another question? Uh, I don't know. Did you want to touch on the recusal or we, we mentioned that we might hit that real quick at the end? I don't. Yeah, I think, I think he, I think he addressed yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much been covered. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> What do you got for others? So I think, I think my other question is, you know, you, you mentioned you're getting married, yeah. you know, you're, you're finally taking the leap. You're uh, foregoing the, uh, the cast discovery and, and making it happen. You know, congratulations. Thank you know, that's you. amazing. It's been a long time. Where are you doing it? Uh, probably at the fountain of youth. Uh, John, Frank, are you really? Yeah, yeah, we talked to we talked to John, and um, <laughs> so we had two ideas. We had two really good ideas. Uh, at first, we wanted to do it at the um, the uh, the Museum of, of Natural Science in um, or the Museum of Science and History in Jacksonville because they've got this huge planetarium, and we kind of wanted to have a wedding under the stars, but it's Florida and weather's super weird. So we thought yeah. about having it at the planetarium and then we, we asked them and it was like, yeah, you can do that. It's like six grand or something. It was insane. Uh, um, so we went back to John and we were like, well, why don't we have a small one in your planetarium? And he was like, yeah, that's super cool. And then we realized we're going to have more than the 30 people that place can hold. So he just offered uh, to let us have it at the, uh, at the Fountain of Youth. We're thinking we're still going to try to do it at night when the park's closed and just, you know, it'd be nice. Very cool. Invite me. Sounds nice. I'll finally yeah. get to dig the fountain of youth. Yeah, yeah, come down. <laughs> Sorry, it's totally fast, it. <laughs> well, awesome, guys. I think, uh, you know, I, I think it's been a, a decent discussion. I don't know that we've we've accomplished much and peeled back the layers the, the way we need to yet, but um, it's definitely got me thinking. I love you guys' ideas. George, love what you're doing. You know, keep it up. And we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us, man. You Thanks know, for having me. It's amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Anytime, Josh. guys. Have a good night. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Take care.